Hey guys, Dave Ray here from DB Restorations. How you guys doing? I'm working on our 70 AAR Tribute CUDA, doing a frame rail on it. I thought I'd show you what I got going on. Check it out. Okay. Well, I got that, my new frame rail in place. This was something new to me, because usually whenever we do a frame rail, I'll do a new inner apron, and uh, usually the fours are out of the car. You know, you're doing a lot of sheet metal work. In this case here, all I replaced was the left front frame rail and the shock tower just by itself. This car had had new inner aprons put on it, as you can see here. I mean, they're in really good shape. I'll kind of pan out this way here so you guys can see. And so I'll show you our frame rail, why I changed it. You can see this baby's a beauty. It's completely rusted out on the top end there. It's got other rust on the side, but the whole bottom end was rusted out too. And you can see somebody had welded a little pieces of plate and, and everything else to it. I mean, look at all the rust falling out of that thing. And uh, it was ridiculous. And the cross member was actually welded to the frame itself too. I had to uh, cut it loose to get it off there as well. Now what I did since I just removed just the frame rail was here's the shock tower. I actually cut the shock tower off. I'll kind of show you what this would look like if it was on there in the car. It would kind of sit like that. Okay, so I did a cut there, as you can see. You can still see a little bit of my paint mark. I did a cut there, then I cut around on the side, and then I cut through the back. And you can kind of see where it was at. I just took a big cutoff wheel. I used like a four and a half inch wheel on a on a grinder and I cut right through the back. So I actually left this part right here, was left inside the car, so I could drop the frame rail itself down. I actually had to take, you can see I still haven't welded it on, but I notched out, I cut this piece right here off of the lower radiator support, just this corner, so that either the frame rail would drop right out. Cause you can kind of see here, with that on there, it's kind of, encapsulating the frame rail in there so the frame rail's got to come out to the side and I wanted the frame rail to drop straight down. Now there's some pros and cons to keeping uh, the inner apron. The, the bad part was being that it was a new inner fender well that was put on there it didn't have spot welds it had plug welds. Plug welds are a lot more difficult to remove than the factory spot welds were because you got to end up drilling a bigger hole. So you can kind of see I ended up losing part of the inner apron around the new shock tower there that I'm going to have to uh, replace whenever I weld. Uh, but you can see how big the holes are. And I had to make these holes big to get around these big spot welds, you know, these plug welds that somebody did on there. Normal spot welds, you can drill a lot smaller hole and pop them loose. But you can see, I got it welded in. I just primarily focused on welding in the shock tower right now. So I got it welded in around there. And on the other side here, I got it welded there, there, and then I got the outer brace uh, welded on there. And you can see that connects up here to the frame rod. I didn't touch any of this. I just drilled out these spot welds right here, these plug welds, and popped this loose. <clears throat> So now I got all the frame rail. I, I mocked it up into place. The shock tower was loose. It's not welded to the frame rail when you get it. So I mocked the shock tower up there, grinded, you know, plenty enough room, put all my weld through primer and everything on there, slipped that into place, put the frame rail up in there. I took all my measurements before I took the frame rail out. So if you're ever doing this, make sure you're on solid ground, which I have cinder blocks and bricks underneath there so this car does not move. I actually shimmed it because sometimes the car does not sit perfectly flat if your garage floor isn't level or whatnot. So I shim the car into where the car is perfectly level, perfectly flat, and it's sitting without it moving. So once you get to that point there, you can start taking all of your measurements, measure twice, measure three times, put all your, you know, document all your, your measurements down on paper, draw pictures if you have to and everything else. So after I got all that there done, all my before ones, then I cut the frame rail out, 
mocked up the new one and started moving it around to match all my original measurements. Now, these AMD, they're beautiful frame rails that AMD repops, but they're not always perfect. So this frame rail is not gonna match up identically, you know, to your original frame rail. So they're not gonna be identical. So you're gonna want to double check all your measurements. As you can see here, I have the cross member in place. I put that in place before I even started welding. And I bolted it all up into place, made sure my front you know, measurements were correct, my rear measurements here, and then I had several measurements up underneath as well. So you can kind of see where the frame rail goes back to the cross member of the torsion bar cross member. So make sure all your measurements are in place. As you're welding, make sure that nothing is moving. See right now, you can see I have all these screws in place. I had to drill big holes in here too to get the plug welds out because somebody had put new four pans in this car, new front four pans. So they had already plug welded everything, so I had to drill all those out. So right now everything is screwed into place. You can see these bolts that I put in there. And what they are is they're a self-tapper. You can see on this side here, it's like a drill bit. And I like to get the ones with a 5 16 head because they're a lot easier to drive in, especially through the sheet metal without them stripping. They make them in a Phillips head, but a lot of times they strip out. These are a lot stronger. So I got all this in place, and as you can see, you can see all my weld through primer coming through these holes. So I'll have to, you know, replug weld all these holes here. But you want to screw everything into place, measure, check your measurements two or three different times. I welded all my heavy stuff first. So I welded all the shock tower in place first once I got it all lined up exactly where it needed to be. And so now I'm going to start working my way around and doing all my sheet metal. So hopefully this kind of helped you guys out uh, if you're planning on doing a frame rail like this. If you have any questions, uh, be sure to, to leave them in the comments or, or shoot me a, a message you know, on my Facebook or Instagram. And I'll be more than happy to to try to get those answered for you but it was a lot easier to do this by cutting that shock tower off and then popping the frame rail out from the bottom and then going back and removing that shock tower afterwards and uh, I just did it you know in reverse order here you know and left that shock tower loose until I got everything exactly where I wanted it before I started welding it so yeah but yeah if you guys like this video be sure to like it and share it and uh, I'll try to get you guys some, some new ones here pretty soon. But this car's coming along good. I'm going to get this thing knocked out and get it all welded up. And, and then, uh, as you can see over here, kind of sweep back here. After I get all that welded up, I got some torque boxes here that I'm going to be welding in on all four corners. And then these babies right here are subframe connectors. So they're going to go in as well. And then I got this really cool... Ride Tech uh, rear suspension. So this is the rear four link that I'll be mocking up into the car and I'll try to get you guys a nice video on that there as well as we start working with that. So Ride Tech's new to me and I'm excited to uh, to get this system installed in this car. So, so stay tuned and uh, you guys take care. And once again, happy holidays to you guys. If I don't talk to you before Christmas, Merry Christmas to you and have a happy new year. And I'll try to get you a video here pretty soon. So as always, this video is sponsored by Ride Tech, DT Auto Brokers, Icebox Performance, and of course, DB Restorations. You guys take care. Talk to you soon.